Hi, in this video I'll be covering searchable drop-down list with two examples. Do you create dashboards or template files for others? Want to add some pizzazz and interactivity? Why not create a searchable drop-down list? You can then use this feature to perform lookups or change the appearance of data in your charts or graphs. You can make it look cool for your users and it's not that hard to do. The fact that this video is less than 15 minutes means that what you may have thought that was hard to do is in fact easy to put together. Let's check it out. So here I go through the first example, and this is going to be using a pivot table. And how do we use a pivot table to do this? Well, first let's create a pivot table. Here's my range of data. Go to insert, pivot table, select my data here. Let's put it on this worksheet like we did earlier. I just put it in H5 here, right? Or H6 or H5. Click OK and it's going to ask for the pivot table fields. And the key here is to put it into the filter field. So let's say we did the same thing we did earlier. I'm going to put job title into the filter field and that's all I need to do. Close that and I have my searchable filter. So if I search for manager, I can search for manager here and it's going to bring up all the managers. Uh, probably the key is not to select multiple items because here it really wouldn't work. It wouldn't populate the rest of the cells here with that. So uncheck that. Here we have manager, if we put manager here, if we put uh, if we put manager here, complete it, we can say, oh, I just want project manager, click OK, and it fills it out here in this cell, and you can use this cell as a reference for other cells for selections or filtering. So in a way, this is a hack when you really think about it. You're using the pivot table filter section for your searchable drop down list. So how can we do it the other way? Well, the other way is going to be a combination of filter, search, uh, is number, functions. And you need to have the M365 uh, version of Excel for this, but it's really cool when you're able to do it this way. But it's another cool way to do it. So the first thing we do is search for what's being typed in, look and see if it is found in true and falses, and then filter it for it. So enough with the explanation, let's do it. So I'm gonna put in my field, let's do the last name like we did earlier, the last name search. And we're gonna have this as our dropdown. We'll hold that for a while. This is the area where we have our helper columns. And I'll just call this helper search, I don't know, column, just some random name. And what we need to do is we need to have the search function. First is gonna be the search, I'm gonna go from the inside out. So the search function is I wanna search um, whatever gets typed in here, and I wanna look at my last names. All right, so I'll look at my last names, control shift down arrow to select that range, uh, press enter, and what it's gonna do is since nothing is selected, let's, let's go back up here, nothing is selected here, blank, it's gonna find that for everything, right? And so that's the first character place for that blank. Now, what I need to do after this is I need to enable true and falses because the filter function needs to know trues and falses when it brings back the results. So I'm gonna put is number here, is number. Is this a number? And of course there's a number here because um, it's looking for blanks, close parentheses. Now, it's going to say all truths. If I put in something like S, it's going to find out some of them are not true. There's no S here in Darrington. There's an S here. So that's why it brings back the truths and falses. Let me delete that now. So with this now, I'm going to use that in a filter function. So type in filter. I'm going to press tab to open the parentheses. Filter in this array based on the truths and falses there. Uh, and I can I can basically just close it right now, and it's going to tell me it's going to find all of it because I didn't put in something here. So I, if I put in something like S, let's do the first one S U T, right? If I put in that, it's going to filter that because that found it true for the S U T. But anything else here did not have S U T, so everything else it's blank here, but everything else is false, right? Let's do what I did from my example. Let's look for the A T here, right? So if I do A T press enter, you'll find anything that has that texture in AT, AT, right? So we have our AT, our AT here, be it Bathew and Lattimore. One thing I can also do is like, if it doesn't find anything, let's say it doesn't find the ZZZ, let's, it gives a calculation error. But what we can do here is we can say, well, if it doesn't find anything, if empty, I just say no data. And then pre close parentheses, press enter. And you can see how, how it says no data now, right? Because there's nothing here with ZZZ in the last name. So now this is my helper search column. And what I need to do is in my search, 
I'm going to bring up a data validation. So go into data, data validation, and I'm going to allow list. So list, and for my source, it's going to be that first cell, but with the hash mark. This hash mark indicates that it's a spilled array. So basically the first cell, the other contents of the rows beneath it are spilling the contents of that array and the hash mark indicates that. So if I click OK, and I see here I've got my full list here, which represents that. And if I try to do my AT like I did earlier, I have to click my drop down, and you get this error message. And what we need to do is uh, there's a setting in the data validation which we need to turn off. This error alert, that was an error. Show error alert. And so we check, uncheck that, click OK. And if I type AT again, click that, it will execute that combination of functions and bring back my list here. And so if I, I can hide this list or put it into a, another sheet, but I can just hide it and this becomes my search, right? So I can do search. If I do the ZZZ again, click my drop down, it says no data. So that's the other way that we can create a searchable drop down list. Either we can use the pivot table and put it into the filter section, or we can have our combination of filter, is number and search functions together to create this drop down list. If you're putting together a file that gives users the ability to interact, why not let them also search for data that brings back results? Think of it as a neat feature that would wow your users because it may be easier for them to use. So now that you know of two ways to do this, just pick the one you like the most. To see more videos like this, click the banner at the end. Still here? What did the mushroom say to impress his date? I'm a fun guy.